Hi, welcome back to Web Squadron. A question was posed to me about images. I better drop the voice. So images. Um, what's the best size of images to load into Elementor when you're trying to combat the fact that we have so many different size screens, you know, small to big to huge, and especially when you're assessing your website on a desktop or a mobile, how do you get around the fact that you are gonna have sometimes a blurry image or an image that just doesn't look good? This is one of those relatively simple ones where, you know, don't go for a massively huge image. Don't load up something that is like 20 megabytes in size that's uncompressed, bad move. Secondly, don't go for something where the pixel size in height and width is more than it actually needs to be. So if you load through an image, which is 3000 pixels in width and 2000 pixels in height, that's a little bit overkill. Yes, it will look amazing on a big 80 inch screen, but in real life, is you know, think about most of your market and the fact that a lot of us access things on our mobile phone now. So look, when you're doing an image, whether it's in Canva or Photoshop or wherever, I tend to stick to doing 1920 by 180 um, for a desktop sized image, desktop wallpaper, whatever you want to call it. When I then come on to like looking at images that are say for um, uh, for a tablet or a mobile, I then start to think a little bit differently and I would rather have my images that are 500 by 300 in height or 378 in width and about 250 in height. It's all subjective. Okay, where am I going for this? Right, just stay with me. So when you add in an image and it looks okay for your desktop, okay, you might have loaded in 1920, 1080, but then when you've actually maybe used that image just in a column, or maybe it's an image on the website, it's not a full background section, that 1920 and 1080 might be more than you actually needed. And it's not uncommon on GT Metrics and other websites to be told, please resize your image. Some of them tell you what the resize is, some of them don't. And you get a little bit stuck with going, well, what do I do here? So I might create multiple versions of the same image. Okay, so let me explain. I'll go to Canva, I'll create it in 1920 by 1080, okay? And then I will um, upload it maybe four or five times, maybe to my website. What I do, will do though is I will have compressed it, okay? And once I've compressed it, before I convert it into a WebP, so I will use the Images to WebP plugin, which is totally free. And I'm just going to go back here just to show you it. So if I go to plugins, install plugins, here is there, images to WebP, totally free. Okay, up to you if you want to use it. It does the job. But before I can do that conversion, I will have added it to my library. Okay, so let's just pretend here was my original image. Okay, one nine, this is 1920 by 561, by the way, but let's pretend it was 1920 by 1080. I upload it a few times, whatever, okay? Then I will have, um, once I've realized whether that's gonna be a section image or a column image or a smaller image, I will then go and resize it. So I might hit edit image and I might have scaled it down. So I might say, okay, this is now gonna be used on a mobile, but I want it now to not be more than say, um, let's, let's just go for 500 in width by 146. And I hit scale and it will scale that image down. And when it rescales an image, it will change the size of it. That's currently 163 kilobytes. Um, sorry, I need to back step. I add an image in, I then convert that image to a JPEG to shave off even more size. So this image originally was about 2.2 megabytes in size. When I uploaded it, it was about 750 kilobytes. I then used this plugin, over here, which again is free, which was PNG to JPEG. And it converts the PNG to a JPEG, which then shrinks it down massively, took it down to 160 odd. Then I convert it to a WebP, but I do that right at the end. Okay, so I then had another image over here as well. So, God, I'm going off in the wrong order. The original image looked like this. Okay, then, I created the, I uploaded it again, but I cut, I, I cropped it to cut away a lot of the gray above and below. Can you see that? That's the original image. It was a big image, 1920 by 1080. 
I, I added it in again and cropped it, okay? So it shrunk it down to 163, and that was the particular size for a particular banner, right? This image, I then modified the size by going edit image, and I said I want the height to not be more than 225. 400 by 225, and I scaled it. So I had the same image at two different sizes. What's the impact? 163 kilobytes. The other image, 123. Not massively different, but when it converts to WebP, it makes a big difference, rather than it being 700 kilobytes. Okay, right. Then, when you go to your page, okay, and if we just go to images, edit, what I then did, in fact, no, I don't need to use this page. Let's go back, let's go back, let's go back to new. Yeah, so on this page here, I then added in two sections. This is a test, by the way, so don't go, that looks really ugly. No, it's just me testing things out for other videos. This section here, the background is the banner. Yeah, the banner, 1920 by 561. That is only going to be visible on the desktop. This banner, though, okay, is only visible on the mobile. This is now, oh, sorry, no, wrong one. Sorry, wrong one. Let me go to uh, mobile. There we go. There we go. So if we now go to the mobile, this is now only visible on the mobile. The image here for this section is now this image, the 400 by 225. So I have put in a smaller image for the tablet and the mobile. Why do you ask that I do that? Because when you do your Google Page Speed Insights for your mobile, just because you put in a bigger image and it has now resized it, when you go to responsive, it is still carrying the original size and all of that. Whereas this one here, which is now visible on the mobile, is resized better for the mobile. So I don't get any warnings about resize your images now. Less bloat, it loads up quicker, all is good. Because the other problem is that when you have a big image and it resizes, sometimes if that had been a thinner image, let me just show you what it would have looked like. Let's just change this to be that one because that is a narrower image. Let's insert it. Can you see that? I'm now lost the elemental symbol that was over here. Let me put it back to this size, to this size even. There we go. Look. I've got the full image back now because it is sized to what it needs to be. Does that make sense? I think so. So for the mobile, I've got a slightly different image. But what if you've got a website and you've created all your images? OK, so let's just go back to desktop. Let's say I've added in a particular image somewhere. Let's say, I don't know, whatever. Da -da 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 -da. Let's go for this one. Let's just say I need the image to be that size. OK. Um, if I have set it up in the style or whatever, the back, so this is a, an image hotspot uh, widget, but let's say I had my image and I now want it to be a particular size in terms of what I load up. How do I know what to do? Well, let me show you. There is a free website called rapidtables.com, web tools, pixel ruler. I'll add it into the description of the video, okay? What you do is, um, if I was now viewing this page here, right, you take a screenshot. So let me just move myself out of the way there just a little bit. You take a, sorry, my computer's making a ping noise. I'm really sorry about that. Right, so what I will do is I will make a screenshot of this. So I'm using a Mac. So I'm just going to take a full size, capture the entire screen, capture. And I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard. With your PC, you will do print screen and then, you know, however you do it. I go over to online ruler, okay? I do command V and it has pasted that image there, like so. Um, let me just shrink it down a bit, there we go. So what happens if I now, oops, if I now click here and go down to that size there, I can now see what is the full size of that image. So if I now wanna have a perfectly sized image, I mean, let's just pretend the image was, was about this big here. I can go like that and I now have my measurements so I can resize it, scale it, whatever, cut a bit out, cut a bit in, whatever you want to do. I can do all of that and have full control over the images. So that's just me in a very crude way explaining how you can be a bit more specific and careful 
over the image sizing for your sections, anywhere else on the page, desktop, tablet, mobile. You can also use the at media CSS uh, within your custom CSS so that it says when the pixels, when the width of the screen is up to 600 or 800 or 1000, use this image instead. Bit more work involved in there, but I'm trying to keep it code free and easy for you and me. Like, subscribe, see you soon.